Welcome everyone who is watching. Hopefully folks can see us okay. It's taking a minute for my Facebook to connect, but um, welcome, welcome to the first in our Meet the Candidates series, the brainchild of our president, Kevin Martin. Um, and I want to, we're so proud to have Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts with us to kick this off and really looking forward to hearing his answers to our questions about peace. Um, so I will send some links in the chat where you can donate to the Senator and also volunteer for his campaign. And if you're in Massachusetts, don't forget to vote in the upcoming primary, September 1st. And um, also, if you're on the Facebook, feel free to post questions as well. That is being monitored, and so we'll be able to see those. And if you are not as familiar as Zoom, I mean, I know most of us are at this point, but um, underneath you will see a Q&A. So use the Q&A feature of the webinar to pose your questions for the Senator as opposed to the chat. And we will try to get to all the questions, but obviously in respect for the Senator's time, we may not have time to address them all. So feel free to reach out to me directly and we'll try to loop back to everyone. Thanks again so much for joining us and I will be sending those links so keep an eye out on where you can donate to the senator and volunteer for his campaign and with that I believe the senator will be joining us shortly hopefully everyone on Facebook live can see us um, and I'm seeing on the chats that we've got most of the folks here and they can also see and hear us so Awesome. Thank you all. And Paul, um, I will hand it off to you to say a few words about the Senator before he gets on. Just give us a little about his record and, you know, the, the kinds of things that he has done for peace. Great. Uh, thanks, Lily, for your work on our effective peace voter campaign. And I really want to welcome over 200 organizers and activists from around the country here on Zoom and on Facebook Live. You know, we're a month away from September 1st primary where our champion, Senator Markey, will prevail over Representative Joe Kennedy III only with your help. Peace Action endorsed Markey as we have countless times because he is a longtime friend and champion of Peace Action and a prolific leader that gets results. He deserves our help, so please take action by clicking the links. So how did Senator Markey become a friend and peace champion? Many of you know that Ed drove an ice cream truck to pay for college. He went from selling, selling frozen treats to freezing nuclear weapons and joining us in the streets. When Dr. Forsberg started the freeze campaign in 1980, one of our predecessor organizations, Markey talked with her becoming our partner and the congressional leader on arms control. A few years later, he introduced and passed the freeze resolution in the House, which helped move President Reagan from criticizing nuclear treaties to enacting the most sweeping arms control pr proposals in history with Soviet Premier Gorbachev. Some of you, like longtime Massachusetts peace action leader, Sheila Foreman, have been working with him ever since. We could spend all night listing marquee legislative victories or bills, but here's just a few. As a representative, he authored and reintroduces every session the Smarter Approaches to Nuclear Expenditures, or SANE Act, named after our organization. It substantially cuts nuclear weapons spending. Before Trump took office, Markey and Congressman Liu introduced the Restricting First Use of Nuclear Weapons Act to prevent any president from launching a nuclear first strike without congressional approval. Responding to reports of Trump resuming nuclear tests, Markey quickly authored the Preserving Leadership Against Nuclear Explosive Testing or PLANIC Act. The legislation would deny Trump the funds to break the generations old moratorium on nuclear testing. After McConnell blocked its movement, he worked with House allies to get the language passed as an amendment to National Defense, the National Defense Authorization Act. When Trump threatened fire and fury, he worked with our friend, Representative Khanna, to introduce the No Unconstitutional War with North Korea Act. And earlier this year, 
He led 21 senators in a call on Trump to prevent war with Iran. Last month, he jumped on first as an original co-sponsor of Senator Sanders' 10% Pentagon cut amendment and helped make sure that it got a vote. Now, I get to give you some breaking news, something that you get to hear first. Markey plans on introducing a resolution tomorrow. He organized well over a dozen senators to demand that Trump extend a new, the New START Treaty, a treaty that peace action helped get ratified as it reduced nuclear weapons between Russia and the US. And besides legislation, he asked tough questions on the committee, Senate Committee on Foreign Relations. He does the hard work behind, this, behind the scenes. He understands the grassroots and he doesn't take us for granted. He and his staff reach out to us and work with us and work with our allies. He invites us to stand side by side with him and speak at press conferences. Clearly, he's a peace action champion, but he's also a prolific progressive leader that gets results. He shows visionary leadership on environmental issues like solving the climate crisis. A long list of environmental groups and leaders have endorsed Ed, joining groups that we work with, like Council for a Livable World, Foreign Policy for America, Progressive Democrats of America, Indivisible, Our Revolution, Progressive Massachusetts. Other endorsers include progressive unions and other peace action endorsees like Representative Jim McGovern and AOC, who he introduced the new the Green New Deal with. Re please read his bio on all his progressive work, including net neutrality. Markey deserves our help. Markey stands up to war contractors and their lobbyists. We need to stand with him. We already raised several thousand dollars through dozens of small donations. You can donate now as much as $2,800, $200, $20, whatever you can do. We've organized volunteers and generated calls. You too can volunteer. We supported Markey through press and social media. You too can do that. Just click the link on your screen. Now, let's hear from this prolific progressive leader that gets results. Please welcome longtime friend and champion of peace action, Senator Ed Markey. Wow, thank you, Paul, so much. Thank you for that incredible introduction, that <clears throat> summary of an action agenda that we need for our country. And, uh, and thank, thanks to everybody at Peace Action for everything that you do every single day. You are absolutely the energy uh, that uh, is behind the peace movement in our country, standing up <clears throat> to this Pentagon defense contractor, right-wing ideologue driven uh, nuclear uh, agenda, which we have in our country. And I can't thank you enough for all of your leadership and for, you know, partnering, you know, in order to have an inside and an outside game uh, to be uh, fighting uh, for the things that we need in our country. <clears throat> it, tomorrow is the uh, 75th anniversary of Hiroshima. Um, I went to Hiroshima on the 40th anniversary. Ronald Reagan was not sending any representatives. So I put together my own delegation that included Leonard Bernstein, actor Jack Lemon, a whole group of people that made it possible for us to be there as witnesses to what had happened uh, on August 6, 1945. And it was one of the most powerful experiences of my life. Uh, and that's really what helped to inspire me <clears throat> to have my amendment pass on the floor of the United States House of Representatives to ban underground nuclear testing in the United States as long as the, so the Soviet Union refrained from underground nuclear testing. And when that amendment passed, that was pretty much the end of underground nuclear testing in our country. And it actually happened during the Reagan administration. Uh, Donald Trump is channeling the worst aspects of that Reagan hero. Uh, the fact that Ronald Reagan would not send anyone to Hiroshima as an official US representative is an indication of how out of step he was with 
what then became the nuclear freeze movement, which I introduced into the United States Congress, uh, and which changed the whole dynamic because of the incredible energy that was built. <clears throat> but today, uh, Donald Trump uh, is posing the same kind of threat and even greater. Uh, Paul already went through fire and fury, pulling out of the INF treaty, not renewing the START treaty, talking about nuclear testing as something that we would restart in the United States. All of this is much too dangerous. Uh, and it's why just two weeks ago, Bernie and I uh, introduced an amendment on the Senate floor to cut the defense budget by 10% and to move that money over to poverty programs, to helping poor people in our country, which is what we should be talking about in this era of coronavirus. When people say, we don't have enough money to help people, we don't have enough money to, um, to help people who, who, with unemployment checks. Uh, and the Republicans are stalling on that right now. We don't have enough money, money to give people uh, a monthly stipend so that they can make it through with a guarantee that they'll have money in their pockets. We know where the money is. The money's in the defense budget. The money's in those tax breaks that Donald Trump and George Bush gave to the upper two percentile when they needed it the least. So we know where the funding is. And we have to stand up and fight to make sure uh, that we create a new agenda for our country. And coronavirus and George Floyd make it very clear to us that next year the agenda in America has to be justice, criminal justice, healthcare justice, that's Medicare for all, Environmental justice, that's the Green New Deal. Uh, economic justice for everyone in our country so that we don't have a, a situation where three multi, multi billionaires have more wealth than the bottom 50% of our country combined right now. Three people, more wealth than the bottom 50%. That's just plain wrong and it has to change. And to a certain extent, that was the point of the amendment which Bernie and I made on the floor just two weeks ago. It was to just make clear that a new day is arriving uh, and peace action is out there building this incredible grassroots movement that's going to make a phenomenal dis uh, uh, difference in terms of us taking education and activation and then turning it into implementation of the kinds of policies which we need in our country. So. I can't thank you enough, <clears throat> everyone joining this evening. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, my race is going very well. We have a lot of momentum. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's, it's a highly competitive race. I appreciate all of your help. Uh, and I look forward to partnering with you uh, for the next six years on the Senate floor. So thank you. And glad, uh, Paul, to take any questions if uh, people have any. Great, thank you, Senator. Um, so again, if you're joining on Facebook, you can um, ask questions in the live streams comments, um, or if you're on Zoom, you can use the question feature to ask questions. We'll get to as many as we can, but again, after 200 people, we're not gonna get to them all. Um, and you mentioned some of the, uh, uh, some of the uh, actors and stuff that you took to Hiroshima. Many of those were part of Hollywood Sane a part of uh, Peace Action's legacy. All right, so our first question is from Norbert Hornstein in Maryland, one of our supporters. Do you think the next administration will be able to restore the INF Treaty and New START? Well, I think New START will be easier because it expires on February 5th and, uh, and that will give President Biden uh, it will give him a couple of weeks uh, to act. And here's the good news. The good news is that President Biden does not have to consult with the United States Congress. He can do it himself. And 
that's the kind of environment that we want to create politically. One, that he gets elected, and then two, that's at the top of the list of the things which we want him to act on. Uh, the INF, uh, on the other hand, expired last year, uh, thanks to Donald Trump and John Bolton. Uh, and I think what, <clears throat> what we have to look for with the INF is to find a way uh, in which uh, we essentially do um, three things. And the first is to come to a mutual agreement with Russia to not deploy any additional INF range missiles in the European continent. And I think we have to just start that negotiation immediately. And then secondly, um, short of Russia destroying its offending missiles, to come to an, an agreement to deploy those missiles outside of the NATO territory so that we don't have that kind of a provocative deployment that, again, moves the region, moves the world more towards a hair trigger. And then third, I would say that we need to engage in good faith, in good faith negotiations on the whole range of issues with Russia and China on space, missile defense, nuclear weapons, you name it, so that we have um, a new era where we're back at the negotiating table uh, and we're trying to resolve these issues, not with a new arms race <clears throat> between Russia and the United States, between Russia and China, uh, but rather that we're trying to resolve these issues peacefully uh, to make sure that we reduce the risk by having fewer weapons, fewer dangerous weapons, fewer newer weapons which are being deployed uh, and reducing this hair trigger threat that we live with right now. So thank you for that great question. Okay, and from uh, Trisha Edrobo in New Jersey, um, as you know, the UN has passed the UN Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons, 40 countries have ratified it. It only needs 10 more to enter into force. No country that possesses nuclear weapons, including the U.S., has signed or ratified the agreement. Uh, do you support ratification of this treaty? Um, and is now a good time to push it? Well, you know, as, they, as the old song, saying goes, we find this truth to be self-evident, right? That, that we need to be moving forward towards ratification, absolutely essential, makes the world a lot safer. And our hope is that, you know, that that will be the direction in which we head. So thank you, you know, thank you for that question. And Candace Cousins of California <clears throat> wonders, can anything be done to reverse and roll back the development and deployment of the new so-called low yield nuclear weapon? Yeah, well, I've been leading the effort. Thank you for that great question. I've been leading the effort uh, to kill the weapon, first of all. It only makes the world more dangerous. Uh, and to make sure it does not get deployed on any additional uh, missile systems, it, again, just puts the world on a hair trigger. Uh, <clears throat> we, don't need, uh, we don't need military and other countries wondering what might be heading their way uh, if it, it would, that potentially has a destructive capacity far greater uh, than a Hiroshima uh, level uh, weapon. So, so I've been leading the effort and next year on the floor of the Senate, when we control it, I'm gonna be making sure that everyone is put on the record on that issue. And I believe that we're ultimately gonna be able to uh, kill that weapon uh, it, because it absolutely makes the world more dangerous. Uh, it leads to a misimpression that somehow or other you can fight, win and survive a nuclear war. They, they're usable devices. Uh, and of course they are not. So next year, uh, that's at the top of the list of my agenda to make sure that we begin the effort to just kill that weapon. 
Great, and we have uh, several people who have kind of a similar question. Uh, they really wanna thank you for introducing the Planet Act. Uh, they've heard the Pentagon officials say they could resume testing in months. Um, do you think that's true? Uh, how much of a say would Congress get? Do you have any sense from any Republican colleagues um, about stopping this? Um, so more about uh, nuclear testing and if the administration really wanted to move forward, is there a way to stop? Well, <clears throat> that's why I introduced the Planet Act because right now there is no constraint on uh, Trump doing new nuclear tests. So we need a law on the books that it cannot recommence uh, without, uh, without uh, getting permission from the United States Congress. So back in 1986, my amendment did pass on the House floor to ban underground nuclear testing as long as the uh, Soviet Union also complied. Uh, and that was the beginning of the end of underground nuclear testing. The last thing we need uh, is Donald Trump, and he's crazy enough to do it, uh, to start up nuclear testing, to have additional mushroom clouds that, you know, that we're um, looking at, to look at uh, underground nuclear testing that will just trigger uh, another round of, uh, uh, of nuclear testing, not just in the United States, but almost giving permission uh, to North Korea uh, and to uh, other countries to, uh, to uh, commence at a much higher rate in nuclear testing regimes. So, uh, <clears throat> so that's why I introduced the Planet Act, uh, so that we would be sending a very strong signal uh, that no president should be allowed uh, to do that kind of uh, nuclear testing without getting the, ex uh, the explicit permission of the United States Congress. So Bruce Hodge of California uh, wonders, what's the prospect of a true 10% Pentagon cut in the next few years? Uh, well, we, you know, Bernie and I, we, we got almost half of the Democratic caucus, half of the Democratic caucus voted for us two weeks ago. Uh, and I think that's in an era where Trump is president, uh, Republicans control the Senate. But when we control the Senate and control the House and get more votes in the House, which are on their way, I think that we have the makings, especially in the post-coronavirus era, where we can see all the injustice, all of the, all the harm that is being done domestically in our country. And we're going to have to find the, uh, the funding from someplace. And so I intend on continuing to press with Bernie and others uh, on uh, this effort to reduce the defense budget by 10% and to shift it over. We need this debate. We're hearing right now, oh, there's not enough more, there's not enough money for food programs for people. There's not enough money uh, to take care of homeless people that would be created if we, um, uh, if we allowed the federal ban on evictions to, uh, be, uh, to expire. Well, there is enough money, you know? And, and actually that's what I say in my, in my bill, the SANE Act, that we have to cut $100 billion out of, the, out of the nuclear budget over the next 10 years. That was built into the amendment which Bernie and I made. So we can see where the money is. It's no secret. We just have to say that we're going to go and to get it because nuclear weapons don't make you more safe. They only make the world more dangerous because other countries start to deploy and you get caught once again in that incredible cycle that the nuclear freeze was created to end, but under Trump, you know, we've, we've, re, uh, we've re entered this era, and Putin is a willing partner, unfortunately, and China will follow uh, unless we have real leadership in the White House and in the United States Senate. And that's what my great hope is next year that, Donald, that uh, Joe Biden will provide that leadership, and I will be on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee uh, forcing these votes so that we move towards uh, a, a, a peaceful resolution of of conflict, uh, not using uh, nuclear weapons or any other weapon. Rosalie Anders asks, how can we connect the peace agenda with the Green New Deal? 
Well, when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and I introduced the Green New Deal, um, just a little more than a year ago, uh, it was called socialist, unrealistic, you know, crazy. Yeah, what was crazy about it? Well, it was the same thing that the nuclear freeze was saying. End it. End the nuclear arms race and greenhouse gases from going up into the atmosphere. Just freeze it and just start to reduce it. And in reducing it, we'll create millions of new jobs for our economy. And what we say is that, uh, that we have to do it uh, with intersectionality. We have to do it with putting frontline communities at the front of the line. We have to do it in a way that absolutely uh, improves upon the way in which uh, black and brown families were treated in the first New Deal. You know, sharecroppers were, were, were not eligible for social security. Domestic workers were not eligible. So this time, let's just be intentional about it. And I think the two movements come together perfectly because in each instance, we're talking about existential threats to the planet. And we're talking about grassroots movements rising up in order to respond to the harm. And so from my perspective, I just think that the fact that I was the author of the nuclear freeze and the author of the Green New Deal just says that the goal has to be to preserve this planet. And that's what Peace Action does every single day. And I just think there's a total overlap in the goals that uh, both agendas have. Well, I know from working here in DC that the schedule that senators have are, is just extreme. I don't know how you do it. You have more energy than someone half your age, and plus you could beat them in throwing uh, free throws in basketball. Um, so do you have any closing uh, remarks before we sign off? I know you have something else. Well, no, I thank you for that. And I thank you for that compliment because um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has a political advertisement that's running up in Boston right now, all across Massachusetts. And she concludes it in her endorsement of me by saying, it's not your age, it's the age of your ideas that are, that is truly important. And so the people on this call are amongst the youngest thinkers and people in our country because you're willing to stand up and expend your energy on these issues. And so are I, okay? So this is just the moment, you know, for us to say, we need, we need these revolutions to be put in place. And it, while I've been fighting on these nuclear issues, these defense issues for years, um, it has nothing to do with your age. It has to do with wisdom, judgment, uh, and whether or not you're able to identify risks and then stand up and fight to uh, end them. So that's what Peace Action does. And it's why it's just such a great honor for me uh, to have your endorsement in this fight. And I give you my word, uh, you have my back right now and I will have your back on all the issues you care about on the floor of the United States Senate for the next six years. So thank you all so much. And thanks for, thanks for all of your help and your encouragement. Thanks again for your leadership. And really our name is Peace Action. So it's about taking action for all of you on the, on the line, please you know, click a link. We can all do something, whether it's donating, volunteering, uh, following the Senator on Twitter, retweeting, <sighs> um, there's action that you can take. So please take action now, click the links. And for those we didn't get questions to, we'll try to maybe ask your, answer your questions offline. Uh, we know this was short, but uh, Senator's busy. He's out there uh, doing his work. He's probably gonna go do his five mile walk now. Um, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> appreciate your leadership, Senator, and thanks for everyone for being on. Got my Fitbit right here. I'm, I'm only halfway through today. Gotta do five miles. Thank you. See you